So you grade the severity of aortic stenosis as mild, moderate, or severe, depending upon the peak velocity of the jet across the aortic valve, the mean pressure gradient, and the aortic valve area. So if the peak velocity across the aortic valve is less than three meters per second, the mean pressure gradient is less than 25, and the aortic valve area is 1.5 centimeter squared or more, then that is mild aortic stenosis. If the peak instantaneous pressure gradient across the aortic valve is between, I mean, we'll, we'll take the peak, peak velocity, I mean, is, 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 is between three to four meters per second, and the mean pressure gradient is between 25 and 40, and the aortic valve area is between one and 1.5 centimeters squared, then we call it a moderate aortic stenosis. A severe aortic stenosis is if the aortic jet peak velocity is more than four meters per second. And if you do four V squared, which means more than 64 millimeters of mercury, the mean pressure gradient is more than 40 millimeters of mercury, and aortic valve area is less than one centimeter squared. But sometimes they don't go hand in hand that if you have a severe aortic stenosis where the aortic valve area is less than one centimeter squared and the mean pressure gradient is more than 40 millimeters of mercury and the stroke volume index is more than 35 ml per meter squared. So that is what we call it is a high gradient aortic stenosis with normal flows. That is the usual type of this valvular aortic stenosis that we see. It's a high gradient aortic stenosis. But sometimes they don't go hand in hand. The mean pressure gradients may be low. The peak velocity across the aortic valve may be lower, but the aortic valve area would also be low. So accordingly, we also get what is called the low gradient aortic stenosis. If it is due to a poor LV function, we call it a classical low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis with a peak velocity of less than four meters per second, mean gradient of less than 40, and the, and the stroke volume index, that is the flow of less than 35 ml per meter squared, and the valve area is still less than one centimeter squared, and the LVEF is less than 50%. Then we have got what is called a paradoxical low flow, low gradient, PLFLG, aortic stenosis, where again the peak velocity is less than four meters per second. The mean gradient is less than 40 millimeters of mercury. Aortic valve area is again less than one centimeter squared. And the stroke volume index is less than 35 ml per meter squared but the LVEF is normal. So this is paradoxical because this is occurring with a normal LV and still we are getting a low flow. Another type of a low gradient aortic stenosis is a low gradient aortic stenosis with normal flows and with a normal LV of this EF of more than 50%. Again, you get a peak velocity less than four meters per second, a mean pressure gradient of less than 40 millimeters of mercury, a stroke volume index of more than 35 ml per meter squared and an aortic valve area of less than one centimeter squared. But this is a controversial entity because it does not make any hemodynamic sense that if you have normal flows and still you're getting a low gradient AS with a less than one centimeter squared area. But this actually may actually mean that this is a moderate aortic stenosis, may not be a severe, because actually speaking, if you, uh, if you apply this uh, equation for the calculation of aortic valve area, uh, uh, you know, that is by, by cardiac cath, in that case, a uh, mean pressure gradient of more than 140, um, of more than 40 should correspond to a valve area of 0 0.8 centimeter squared. And since we are taking one centimeter squared, 0.8 to 1 centimeter squared could, could represent a moderate aortic stenosis rather than a severe aortic stenosis. 
we have got another type of a high gradient aortic stenosis with low flow and that happens because of the increased afterload to the lv that because that, that is across the across the aortic valve there is a increased afterload which reduces the myocardial function so the so so the so that you end up in a low flow but high gradient aortic stenosis now this is just a afterload mismatch and this always improves after aortic valve replacement now you see this case number 1 a 79 year old female with hypertension and good lv function history of shortness of breath with palpitations and doppler revealed a low gradient and a low aortic valve area by doppler and you can see here a calcified aortic valve you can see a left ventricular hypertrophy and you can see that the lv function is quite good so yet this patient had a low aortic valve area of less than 1 cm squared and a low pressure gradient so this comes under this category which i told you a paradoxical low flow low gradient aortic stenosis so this comes under that category and you can see these numbers we took the lvot diameter as is seen in the top picture in the parasternal long axis view in mid systole so that was 19.8 mm as you can see the numbers the velocity time integral at the lvot using the apical five chamber view was 12.6 cm the vti across the aortic valve was 50.4 cm the v max that is the peak velocity across the aortic valve was only 2.7 meters per second with a with a with a peak gradient of 29 a mean gradient of 19 a heart rate of 75 and a stroke volume of only 38 ml so this all qualifies this particular patient it qualifies to a low gradient low flow aortic stenosis the calculated aortic valve area by the continuity equation was 0.77 cm square is this clear now you can also calculate the aortic valve area sometimes by 3d planimetry if you get a fairly adequate window and the aortic valve area was 1.13 cm square i i i just fix my battery please just give me time this this battery is running out yeah so you can see this is the 3d echo and we can actually planimeter the valve without making any geometric assumptions about the shape of the lvot which we say it is circular so we use the formula for the area of a circle but here we directly planimeter and we getting a somewhat higher valve area of 1.13 cm squared so sometime there can be a discrepancy between the planimetered aortic valve area as well as the hemodynamically calculated aortic valve area so the cardiac output in this patient was only 2.8 liters per minute the body surface area was 1.6 meter squared the stroke volume index was 23 ml per meter squared very low so thus this was a patient of a low gradient aortic stenosis with good lv function so a paradoxical low flow low 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 uh, paradoxical low flow and low gradient aortic stenosis and the doppler aortic valve area was it overestimated the severity of as and that is because the doppler calculates the aortic valve area at the level of the vena contracta while the planimetry it takes the anatomical aortic valve area which is somewhat larger than the area that you get at the level of the vena contracta 
So the Doppler measures the cross-sectional area, which is EOA, that is effective aortic orifice area, rather than the true geometric orifice area. So that is the reason sometimes for the discrepancy between the calculated aortic valve area by hemodynamics, that is by Doppler, versus the one that is calculated, that, that is plenimetered by either 2D or 3D.